Okay. I think I think we did it. There we go. I think we did it. And it looks like we're also on YouTube. Hi guys. How you doing? Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. That wrong wrong damn button. <laughs> we are almost so smooth. Uh Hello. so close. How you doing, everybody? Uh. Welcome. Hey, everyone. Gather on in. It's that time of the week. Your favorite time of the week. Your favorite time of the week is our podcast. Yes. <laughs> uh, thank you to DJ Skeletor for gifting a whole bunch of subs and for subbing himself. Uh, Miss Banana, thank you for the three months. What is your most likely and least likely announcement you think is going to happen tomorrow? Two days? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah. I thought it was 22nd. 21st is the partner presents. And then, no, the partner direct. And then the 27th is the Pokemon presents. 27th is the Pokemon, yeah. I didn't even know there was a Pokemon. Oh, it's, it's, in, it's in the show notes. Good thing we have a whole podcast yeah. to get me up to speed and all the gaming <laughs> news that's happening around. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you to uh, Will Wolf, damn it, with the six months. Hey, Wolf Bros, with Madam Web being the latest meme tactic movie in meme. meme tastic. You, you spelled that wrong. Okay. <laughs> meme tastic movie in Sony's Marvel Cinematic Universe. What other no name Spider Man character do you think should get their own $100 million waste of time? <laughs> I was explaining who Madam Web is yeah. to Hannah. Uh huh. It was very difficult. I, I'm I'm going back into the office for my nine to five tomorrow, and mm -hmm. I know somebody's going to ask me, and like I'm mentally preparing myself for how I'm going to explain to this person that Madam Web is an old lady who sits in a chair. Yeah, and then now, and now it's this, and yeah. now it's a whole god. You know what's a good analogy? Uh, uh, the architect in the Matrix. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that is actually yeah, the architect in the Matrix, but mm -hmm. they made it a hot young. Yeah. Woman. So there's that. And then I got to explain the bad guy, Ezekiel, who my one friend who's a ma big Spider Man fan. I didn't fan, know it was Ezekiel. Yeah. My one friend who's a big Spider Man fan, it's like, well, which Ezekiel is it? And I'm like, there's more than one. I thought Ezekiel <laughs> was an X Man. No, Ezekiel is an old guy who happens to have Spider Man's powers and it's very like philosophical and whatnot. Is he the one that made Mary, Mary Jane uh, not married to him anymore? No, that was the demon Mephisto. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's very... It's a whole It's a whole Very thing. confusing. Yes. It was a weird time in the early 2000s for Spider-Man. I'm going to be honest with you, Robert. Okay. I really want to see Madam Web. <laughs> I, I, all I've been seeing are TikToks of people saying just how horrible the movie is. Yeah. But they're like, it's kind of... It's kind of so bad that it's fun. Exactly. Like yeah. I've seen like the bootleg clips on Twitter and stuff, and I'm like, this looks like the funniest movie <laughs> to have ever come out. I I will not go to a theater for that. Oh no, no, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna wait till it's on like Netflix. Or I whatever, might scroll but... through it. Yeah, I might, it might be worth worth a, a little romp. Yeah. Uh, flight in service. Thank you for the two months, Mister Rock PR. Thanks for the 13 month. Hi, Uncle Bob and Daddy Will. Hey. And original Spiff. Thanks for the 23 months. Dabs. Okay. Uh, all right. Today, we didn't even talk about what we're talking about today. No. <laughs> I assume we're talking about uh, how Sony straight up said, we don't have any games. Yeah. They're just like, yep, no, nothing coming out. Video games are over. We're done. We're back to yeah. making Walkman. Uh, there's that. And I figured this would also be a good chance to... Normally, in the beginning of the year, we go through all of the games that are coming out. Yeah. Like we go through a list. Um, we never did that. No. Because there was actually a decent amount of news at the beginning of the year. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll find an article uh, that has all the actual games that are coming out this year. Yeah. But it's seeming like this year is going to be rough for the whole industry. Yeah. Well, it's already rough with like all the layoffs and stuff going on. And then it just looks like it's so weird because like last year was like considered the best year in terms of like games being released. And now it's it looks like it's going to be the exact opposite of that this last year. Last year had some bangers. Yeah. Uh, this year it's looking like there's nothing being released, but also, uh, I, I'm trying to find a tweet now. Uh, I think it was from Danny O'Dwyer who is at GDC. 
Okay. And they said that the consensus among developers is that this year is going to be really rough. Here, here, wow. here it is. Here's the, here's the tweet. Um, industry health check after two days at Dice. It was Dice. Okay. Not, not that makes sense. Yeah. Everyone is shit talking Embracer Group. As they're, they should. They're the ones who yeah. buy up everybody, all, all the different game companies. <laughs> only to shut them down. Only to shut them down for no reason. Uh, there's minimal investment coming from publishers, which is not a good sign. Yeah. That just means that uh, publishers aren't paying the money to developers to develop stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, many venture capitalists have tightened belts too, which means less funding still. Ever increasing cost of AAA development a real problem given the uh, little core market expansion. So uh, nobody's giving the money and it's costing more to make games. Yeah. I saw somewhere it was related to all of this. Apparently, because there was a big gaming boom during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone was buying video games because they had nothing else to do. So, like, video games saw a massive increase in sales. Yeah. And so, there was massive investment into video games. But now that things are have gotten relatively back to normal and have stabilized, all that, you know, all that has shrunk dramatically. And, you know, the games industry only... Like, it's bigger than it was in 2019, but only incrementally so. It's as big as it would have been if there wasn't a pandemic surge. That, I think... Now, I think that's great. I, I, I think that return to normalcy is good. Yes. Because the alternative is crashing harder. Yes. Uh, to these big companies, that is bad. Because yes. they always have to profit over the previous yeah. year. But that's just impossible when there was a year that was just so crazy. Yeah. When we had such weird circumstances, you're never going to be able to recreate that. Yeah. Um, so I think I see this as a good thing, but the the way that our economy works, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a good thing. And, you know, to Sony's credit, they're, that's what they're talking about with, you know, no new major games coming out this year. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's all part of that. Yeah, that's, but that's weird. It's weird to have a year with just nothing. It is. We just got Hell Divers, which is well, good. That's a I $40 mean, there's, game. There's not nothing. It's just no major AAA, like the, the big dogs. Still, we just had here. a year with a bunch. Yes. Last year had a bunch of crazy yeah. stuff. And this year doesn't seem to have much. Not even from Nintendo. Mm -hmm. And even Xbox was like, yeah, I mean... I mean, Xbox, they did their developer direct, but like outside from Indiana Jones, like they don't really have all that much. And, you know, Xbox, as we've explained on this podcast before, is in last place. So who cares? They, yes. Yeah. They don't seem to be focusing too much on yeah. uh, what they have. Okay. Um, I guess we'll also talk right off the rip. Uh, well, no, let's just go right into it. Yeah. Let's go. Well, for, actually, there's a free game on the Switch. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, so if you're subscribed to Switch Online, sometimes Nintendo's like, hey, you want to just play a game for free for a while? <laughs> the whole game, too. And it's an exciting one. Uh, it's FC24. Wait. EA soccer game. Wait, what? I, th they don't, <laughs> I thought it was FIFA. They don't call it FIFA anymore. Okay. Yeah, no, they, they don't they don't have the FIFA license anymore, but it, it's the same damn game. It, this is FIFA. Yeah, for all it's intents and purposes. For all intents and purposes. They, they just don't have the license to the name FIFA. Correct. Okay. Uh, Switch Online members from February 20th uh, to February 26th, you can download and try EA Sports uh, FC24 at no additional cost. Uh, game requires a download of at least 31 gigabytes of via the big. internet connection. You may also require to create a link... Uh, to create or link a Nintendo account, micro SD card may be required, depending on your storage. Um, so yeah, it's the whole it's the whole game. You can play the whole game for a week and see if you like it or not. That's kind of uh, a big download. Yeah, for them to ask of you. I'm surprised that they went with a game where like so like intensive on your on your system. I guess they they expect everyone just has SD cards in their Switch already. I mean, it's a big game. And uh, I mean, it's worth the 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 the, the, the risk trial. of people yeah. not having the storage for it. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, other game companies don't give a shit how much storage no. you have. Uh, so that's good if you're interested in soccer at all. Yeah, there you go. You get if a, you, you don't live game. in America, 
<laughs> or if you do live in America, but you're one of those weird people who stay up till four in the morning to watch a European soccer match. That's weird. You got you got sports here on the home front. Yeah. You uh, got actual football where they date Taylor Swift. <laughs> Uh, Verang, thank you for the 100 bits. Best way to enjoy this podcast, watch on YouTube to avoid the Twitch ads and donate through Twitch. There you go. Yeah. That works. Hey, that works. Whatever whatever floats your boat. We accept any and all loopholes in how to enjoy this podcast. I do like this weird world where people are multi-streaming to both platforms because I like to watch on YouTube because yeah. I have YouTube Premium. Angel Biz, thank you for the eight months. Uh, love my wolf bros. Hello. We love you. Love you too. Uh, all right, now let's get into the meat of it. Uh, yes. We'll talk. We talking about the no new major titles. We're talking about the PlayStation entering later stages of. Um, I think the later stages is part of it. Isn't yeah, it? it's it's yeah. it all goes hand in hand. Okay. Um, I mean, we can talk about the later stages first. Yeah. All right. Let's rock and roll here. Uh, after sales, the PlayStation Five failed to meet expectations. Sony has said that the console is entering the latter stage of its life cycle. Sony has set an ambitious target of 25 million PS5 sold during the current uh, financial year, ending in March 31st, 2024. But as uh, but has now revised its forecast down to 21 million after PS5 sales uh, during the crucial holiday 2023 quarter came in lower than expected despite aggressive promotions. Uh, Sony only sold 8.2 million PS5s uh, during the third quarter, ending December 31st, 2023, up from the 7.1 million sold during the same quarter of the previous year, uh, but that has not that was not enough to hit Sony's lofty target. According to Bloomberg, Sony senior vice president Naomi uh, Matsuoka said the company now expects the sales pace of the PS5 to start falling from the next fiscal year, which begins April 2024 and runs to the end of March 2025. Looking ahead, PS5 will enter the latter stage of its life cycle, uh, Matsuoka is quoted as saying. As such, we will be we will put more emphasis on the balance between profitability and sales. For this reason, we expect the annual sales pace of the PS5 hardware will start falling from the next fiscal year. The PS5 launched in November 2020 during the height of the pandemic and has now sold uh, 54.7 million cop, uh, units in just over three years. The Nove this November, the console turns four years old, and with Sony now saying it's entering the second half of its life cycle, thoughts will inevitably turn to the next generation and the PlayStation 6. Uh, one game that may, set, may be set for the PS... One game that may be set for the PS6 as a launch title is Hideo Kojima's return to action espionage, Fizzin. Uh Kojima has said work on the game is expected to begin in earnest at Kojima Productions after Death Stranding 2 and in partnership with Sony. Death Stranding uh, 2 has a 2025 release window and based on Sony's latest comments, probably won't come out before April 2025. Fizzin wouldn't uh, then be expected until 2026. At the earliest, possibly 2027 or 28, the PS4 came out in November 2013. The PS5 came out seven years later in November 2020. If this pattern repeats, uh, the PS6 will come out in November 2027. I thought that he was working on Fizzant. I didn't know he was waiting for Death Stranding to end. I mean, it's probably like pre, pre, pre-production. Like he probably has like he's working on the script. He's probably doing concept art. Yeah, he probably doesn't have like they probably haven't started like building levels or creating like right. enemy AI or I, I casting or anything. I like thought that. he was working on three games at once, but no. he's kind. I mean, he's kind of working on it a little bit, I guess. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, is there a pattern between console releases? No, uh, there hasn't been for a long time. Yeah, no. Th th this is a weird. Uh, I, what have we said? Game. Console generations are longer and longer. They've been getting longer and longer. Yeah. yeah. And it's weird to put it into perspective because we're old. Yeah. And time doesn't seem like it's gone as quickly as well, it did. <laughs> the way I've been thinking about this, the PlayStation 2 was my entire high school life. You know, I started high school in like 2000 and I graduated in 2005. That was the entire seventh generation of, co of consoles, PS2, GameCube, and Xbox in 20 in 2005 that's when the 360 came out and that's when the next gen came out mm -hmm. so it was a five year period the PS3 and the 360 lasted much longer than that and the PS4 and Xbox one also lasted much longer than that so yeah games generations are getting longer and longer and longer but it's still surprising that 
it seems like the PS5 hasn't even hit its stride yet. And this guy's coming out and saying, like, start wrapping it up. <laughs> I saw a couple of tweets talking about how the PlayStation 5 didn't even feel like a new con like a new generation. It felt like just a people were yeah. saying PlayStation 4 Pro Pro. Yeah. And I was like, that's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's also too, yeah, like, yeah, it launched during the pandemic. So like for two and a half years, like it was selling out places and stuff, but I don't think as many people owned yeah. it as like people as like Sony thinks did. But people weren't able to get their hands on yeah. it for like two years. And like last year, people finally started getting their hands on it. I finally got my hands on it. A lot of my friends were finally getting their hands well, on it. Well, now you got a whole backlog of games to play. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're like, fuck, we don't need any more yeah. games. We got we got all the games um, already. But this and but and like also too, like games are taking longer and longer to make now. Yeah. And a lot like most of Sony's uh, first party studios haven't put out like a game mm-hmm. on the PlayStation 5 like cuz they, they got to make them bigger and bigger and yeah. bigger and bigger. So like you know, it took them like 10 years to make The Last of Us Part 2. If if this is true like they're they're starting to, like this is the later half of the system, we're not going to see The Last of Us Part 3 on the PlayStation 5. You know, we're not going to see, you know, I mean, we saw Horizon Forbidden West, but we're not going to see the next Horizon on the PlayStation 5. We won't see the next God of War on the PlayStation 5. There's nothing wrong with having these big blockbuster releases, but not everything needs to be a big blockbuster release. Like, look at... Right now, we have Helldivers, which is PlayStation's last title. Yeah. That game is only $40, Yeah, which is still a decent amount of money, but, Mm -hmm. I mean, compared to everything else. Uh, And I don't want... Like, it's, it's massive right now. Yeah. It's huge. And I think part of why it's so big is because it also launched on pc yes but um there's not much to the game like like right. it's it's uh it's it's like a horde mode it's yeah. just a horde mode and there's you know you like get what you like collect and unlock like weapons and stuff but there's really not a, it's it's not a big game there's not yeah. a lot to it but it's fun as fuck yeah. and like that's that's what you it would behoove these big companies that are shoveling money into the furnace it would behoove them to just make a just just make the game fun. Yeah, make a good game. Yeah, you don't have to spend millions and millions or billions of dollars. Well, I mean, apparently they do because like they've conditioned themselves to think that every game needs to be bigger and better than the last one. Yeah. Part of a big, you know, it th- kind of does, but it also like to a point. Yeah, you know, because when the Insomniac leaks happened, one of the things that like stuck out to people was Spider Man Two cost 300 million Mm dollars to make and i don't think it's profitable yet and that was like the best selling game on the system last year and if you're the best selling game on your system and you're still not profitable that's a problem yeah yeah i mean that's the system seller yeah the spider-man that's the one everybody pointed to that's the one that got me actually to turn on my playstation that's the one that actually got me to buy the playstation yeah so it worked um that's one of the games that i understand shoveling a bunch of money into they probably could have cut some corners they oh, probably yeah. didn't need to spend that much money no on yeah it. um but still that's one of the ones that where it makes sense um also i was gonna say that between uh console we were saying it, it's been getting longer and longer between console generations mm-hmm. it's the gap between uh technology between the different consoles has also gotten smaller yeah the law of diminishing returns is the the overlap is greater too you know the overlap between ps3 and ps4 was much smaller than the ps4 and ps5 you're talking about the techno technological overlap yeah because like games games come out for both systems yeah for longer than they did in the past that's because there there's not much difference there's not much difference there's less and less difference between it's not much difference it's also harder to make games now so they need to you know, maximize their profits by having games on like as many systems as possible. So it's it's harder to make big AAA games now, mm-hmm. but it's never been easier to release games for multiple platforms. Right now, games will work on whatever. You don't have such unique architecture anymore. the The, the systems are basically just little computers. Yeah. Uh, so now developers have the tools to put games wherever they want. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's still it's still a decent amount of work. Yeah. To put your game on other platforms and make sure it works on everything. Yeah. But uh, it, it's not as hard as it was back in the PlayStation 3 days. Like, mm-hmm. That was a nightmare for developers. Yeah. Um, so I 
understand why it's taking so long for the next for the PlayStation Six. I mean, apparently it's not going to take that much longer. It's going to take four more years <laughs> if this is the latter half of the life That's cycle. That's kind of a long time. Not twenty nineteen. No. What, when did PlayStation twenty twenty? Twenty twenty was when the PS five came out. Okay. That's and now a, we're in twenty twenty four. Yes. And then if this if this says twenty twenty seven is when the PlayStation six will come out if the cycle repeats itself. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a long time. You think so? Seven years. That's a de- that's a healthy life cycle. But a lot of people haven't had their the system for that long. <laughs> yeah, well Yeah. I mean the <laughs> Wii was a little similar. The first yeah. year it was hard to get. Mm-hmm. You know. This one it was two like two years. But that's another one of those situations where uh, a lot of people had it. It was just hard to get in the stores because it was selling out so much. But it right. was still selling. Like yeah. it was, it was being stocked in the stores, and then people were buying it. Uh, Nintendo has those issues; they can't keep the stuff on the shel- se- mm. shelves. But it is still selling a lot. Right. You know, it's just hard to perceive that because you don't see anybody with PlayStation shopping bags. Mm-hmm. You know. Um. But yeah, somehow. Uh, this means that they're slowing down releasing games. <laughs> let's uh, all right. Let's jump into the next part of it. Yes. Uh, Sony won't release any big first-party exclusive PlayStation Five games and any of its existing franchises this year or before the end of its next financial year, ending in March 2025. Um, regarding first party software, we aim to continue to focus on producing high quality works and developing live service games, ugh. Uh, but while major projects are currently under development, we do not plan to release any new major existing franchises titles next, uh, fiscal year, like God of War, Ragnarok or Spider-Man said, um, Sony's president, COO and CFO, uh, Hiroki Totoki. Um, (laughs) that's, that's his name. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Hiroki Totoki. Yeah, that's a good name. That's a good name. Uh, Sony has been quiet about its post Spider-Man 2 slate and Totoki's uh, statement confirms suspicion uh, that PS5 was facing a long gap in exclusives in its schedule, similar to that between uh, experienced by Xbox in 2022. Uh, Insomniac's Wolverine game, for example, is known to be a long way off with the recent hack revealing the project's release date in tw- uh, to be 2026. Naughty Dog's next next project is unknown, while its Last of Us multiplayer has been scrapped. For 2024, Sony is leaning on third-party publishers and developers to make up the shortfall. This month, we'll see the release of Square Enix's Final Fantasy VII Rebirth as a PlayStation 5 exclusive, while Sony has snapped up console exclusivity to, Ka- to Konami's Silent Hill 2 remake for later this year. A recent state of play focused oh. on these and other exclusive games from outside studios, including Rise of Ronin and Stellar Blade. Splashy first-party exclusives exclusives sorry like horizon and god of war games are playstation stock and trade so how come sony is facing such a long gap between such releases it could be for any number of reasons simple bad scheduling luck or delay effects from production slowdown caused by the COVID 19 p- pandemic um to toki who will replace jim ryan as interim ceo of sony interactive entertainment when ryan leaves on april 1st seems to have an opinion on the culprit on an investor call about the latest financial results, Totoki hinted that he felt PlayStation's in-house studios could be better run when it comes to their business plans and development schedules. People who work in the studios have very high motivation, they're highly motivated and very good people, and they've got great creative minds and knowledge of live streaming. Um, however, having said that, when it comes to business, I think there is room for improvement. And that's to do with how to use money, the schedule of development, and how to fulfill one's accountability towards development. Those are my frank impressions. I continue to engage in dialogue with the people so that we can find the right way to proceed. Regardless of its reason, the gap in big first-party games will have an impact on the PlayStation business. PlayStation is having an enormously successful year. The gaming division reported a record quarter in terms of revenue. The PlayStation Network hit an amazing 123 million monthly active users. But Sony has lowered its aggressive forecast of PS5 sales in its financial year from 20 from 25 to 21 million units. And Tatoki said he expected a gradual decline in PS5 sales starting in Sony's next fiscal year partially due to entering the latter half of the console's life cycle. So basically what he's saying is uh, games are costing too damn much and we need to like figure out why that is and re, you know, recalibrate scheduling and finances. So that is not happening. 
I don't feel like it's as dire anymore. I mean, they don't have they they named games like God of War and Horizon and Spider Man, which are uh, that's what I think of when I think of like big first party PlayStation titles yeah. or whatever. But they've got Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which I mean is uh, oh, it is a PlayStation Five exclusive. Yeah. Okay, that's a PlayStation Five exclusive. Uh, Silent Hill Two remake is also yeah. a PlayStation Five exclusive. Um, Rise of Ronin and Stellar Blades. Stellar Blades, the one with the uh, with the butt cam, yes, cam- cameras following yeah. the girl's butt the whole time. Uh, and those are all gonna be big titles. So yes. uh, it's really not that bad. But the I think the news is that they're not. There's not gonna be anything coming from Sony themselves. Yeah. Usually, you have the yeah. one major console exclusive every year to like remind people like why you bought the system in the first place. Experiences you can only experience on this one system. And yeah. Sony is basically here saying, like, we don't have one this year. Yeah, I don't know what this means. It's probably just poor planning. Uh, yeah. But it's scary that we hear that news at the same time that I hear that uh, developers are seeing less funding and, yeah. and they're, the whole industry is bracing for a weak 2024. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know what that means. I, I mean... Maybe there'll be less games. There'll be less people buying games. I think that companies have this weird, antiquated uh, thought of of success, and they can only feel successful if they made more money than the previous year. And yeah. we just absolutely fucked the economy up in mm-hmm. such a way that it can't. You can't think of it like that anymore. Yeah. We we had some unforeseen circumstances in 2019, 2020, and 2021 uh, that makes it so that. What success means different things right now. Yeah. Some industries were absolutely decimated. Some industries absolutely thrived, and we're yeah. we're now getting back to normal. And I think that that is success. That yeah. is that is successful. Um. Yeah, I just think I just think it's um representative of what like the entire games industry is going through. Like, they think they're all like everyone's now coming to grasp with just how difficult it is to make games in a financially responsible manner, but also a timely manner. Like you used to think like it used to be one studio could put out a game a year and like never soft put out a Tony Hawk game every year during um, the PS2 era. Hmm. Now, in order to get a call of duty game out every year, you need like five different studios working on one game. Yeah. And it's it's just not sustainable anymore. Yeah, and and you burn yourself out. Even Tony yeah. Hawk did. Yeah, eventually you're gonna release a bad game. Yeah, or something that's barely different than the previous one. Yeah, and I think you know, and not to pick on like the yearly release uh, schedule or anything like that. I don't think that's good either. But it just goes to show you like how far we've come mm-hmm. when something that used to be relic. I don't want to say it was easy, you know, to do, but. It just has gotten so much more complex as the years go on. Yeah. And I think, you know, now nowadays, you know, if if a game doesn't sell, you know, X amount of copies within the first week, the game is a failure and the studio is in danger of getting shut down. And I think part of what Totoki san was talking about was trying to er- eradicate that way of thinking. Because that's how you wind up with like another video game crash. Yeah, that's he's right about that. Yeah, we we yeah we can't think like that anymore. Um, do we want to talk about uh the games that are coming out? Yeah, I guess we could. Yeah, or do we want to talk about the Xbox stuff first? Um, why don't we talk about the games that are coming out? Okay, because I feel like that's more relevant. Yeah. Right Before that, uh, thank you to nobody. Nobody did anything, so. Fuck you. I thought, I thought we had I thought we had uh I thought we were friends. I thought we had notifications, but we don't. Um all right. So here's just a list uh that I found from Game Rant, who usually has pretty good lists of all yeah. the stuff coming out this year. Uh in January we already had uh The Last of Us Remaster was January. Okay. Yeah. The Last of Us Part Two Remaster. I forgot about that. Uh Prince of Persia Lost Crown. Pa- Prince of Persia Lost Crown, great. Yeah. Awesome. Love it. Pal World, kind of slapped. It's fucking stupid, but yeah. it was fun. Um, what else? In Shrouded, I see a lot of people playing that and liking that. Tekken Eight is a, that, is a that's been a big one. That's a big yeah. one right now. Uh, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth is very popular. Silent uh, Hill Short Message shouldn't even count. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, February, we got Grand Blue Fantasy Remix, which I heard is good. Uh, uh, Suicide Squad, unfortunately. Uh, Persona 3 Reloaded. Uh, Foam Stars, if people are playing that. The Tomb Raider Remastered, the collection of 1, 2, and 3. Notice you skipped over Helldivers 2, but that's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't see Helldivers 2. <laughs> um, Skull and Bones. Which I hear is absolute trash. I've heard it's really bad. I've heard apparently it's not even like Black Flag like the success of the black flag it's yeah. it's just a shitty sea of thieves i saw a side by side yeah. of of skull and bones and black flag and black flag looked better wow. and i remember hating a black the boat shit and black yeah. flag um mario vs donkey kong is whatever it looks like a little kid game i played the demo of it on the mm -hmm. switch and i mean i like that style of game i like that uh, i like the first one i like the donkey kong 94 like levels that it's inspired by so i was having fun with it i was also playing it on my tv and i was playing sonic superstars on my tv and that game was like looks rough on the switch i'm like oh i guess the switch was really showing the stage and then i played this i'm like no wait a minute second just sucks <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> this game looks amazing no for real um also uh Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is, is the end of the month. I didn't yes. realize that. Yeah. And Brother, A Tale of Two Sons remake. Yes. Didn't realize that. I haven't seen anything about that. Yeah. It's been quiet trailer? over there. They have a trailer, but like I've heard nothing about the game since then. I don't even remember the trailer. Yeah. This trailer's from two months ago. Ah. <laughs> this is oh, wow. It? Is this not it? A Tale of Two Sons remake. Announced, announced trailer from two months ago. Okay, yeah, I guess it is it. They announced it two months ago? That's crazy. They think they announced it at the Game Awards? And it's releasing that quick? That's yeah. crazy. I remember there was something weird about this game. I think it has, like, actual co-op in it instead of just one person co-op. So, so, what I've been told by Wood is that, because uh, I said the first game you use two of the thumbsticks. Yeah, you control each other with, yeah. yeah. Uh, and he said, yeah, or you can just play co-op. On the original version? That's what he said. Okay. Yeah, I never I never knew that. I don't, yeah, I don't remember. Uh, so, I don't know. I, yeah. guess, I guess this is going to probably focus more on regular co-op. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, where am I? Uh, uh, that's, March. That's February. We're into March now. Yeah. Uh, I don't know any of these games. Alone in the Dark? Alone in the Dark? Really? Yeah, that's the the big reboot with David Harbour okay. in it. So we'll see. I don't know what they're doing with that game. I don't know if it's a return to forum or if it's another weird ass multiplayer game. But I guess we'll see when it comes out. Rise of the Ronin is also yes in March. March uh, WWE 2K24. I thought the game was already out with the amount of promotion that game has been getting recently. Princess Peach Showtime. Yes, we're seeing a lot of games. Yeah. Uh. Not Park Snow Day? What is that? It is not another RPG like the one Ubisoft were making. It's not one of those. It's something completely different. Type of gameplay. I think it's a multiplayer game. Is it like the old uh, first person shooter? <laughs> no, I wish. Wait. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it might be. Uh, play with up to three people. Use matchmaking or solo the game uh, with ally bots. And battle through a snow pile town of South Park. I got this little tiny trailer right here. Yeah. But no, it, it oh, kind oh, of yeah, looks like the yeah, old N64 the game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. 90s kids will like that one. Uh, all right. Moving on to April. You got Dave the Diver coming to PS4 and 5. Freedom Planet 2 uh, coming. Uh, Stellar Blade is coming in April. The Braid Anniversary Edition is coming in April. Stellar uh, Blade is the one with the girl's butt. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, May, so far, Homeworld 3 and Senua's Sacrifice, Hellblade 2. Now we're getting into... Now we're getting less and less games. Yeah. <laughs> uh, June, it's Destiny 2, The Final Shape. That's the one everyone has to buy, otherwise Bungie's going to be in trouble. That sucks. Yeah. yeah. That better be good. But yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Like games have it's so hard to make games now if you're not turning a profit, you're shit out of luck here. Well, they fucking ruined Destiny. Well, yeah. <laughs> they shot they, they they that that game the first one had so much going right. for it. And then they just fucking threw it all away. 
uh august black myth wukong i can't believe that's not out yet yeah i've heard so much about that and isn't the fucking developer like problematic or something probably i keep hearing about this game people are nuts about it, but i was like didn't the fucking ceo of the company that made it like games developed by game science and didn't, didn't isn't he like a, a not good person most game companies are not run by good people oh, i know uh while you look that up yeah uh stalker 2 is in september and warhammer 40,000 space marine 2 also in september stalker 2 was a game that like that's been in development for a really long time the first one came out i think in like 2010 or something mm-hmm. so um it's just it's good we're finally getting like that game out um black myth wukong controversy after the release of pre-alpha gameplay in august of 2020 studio head and ceo feng ji made lewd comments about the video's popularity on weibo uh some chinese internet users uh who were offended by these comments uncovered that game science in 2015 used explicit graphics suggestive text and fat shaming in some of its some of its job advertisements as a result of the misogyny and homophobia from the developer, some female video game players called for changes to the male-dominated culture of gaming in China, with others suggesting to pirate the game instead of supporting it. This was corroborated by reports at IGN in 2023, who further confirmed that the studio co-founder and lead artist Yang Qi um, posted a rant in 2013 on gender stereotypes, while another technical artist made fetishistic allusions towards a female game character in August of 2023 following the release of another trailer. That's a lot of different situations of misogyny. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot, it's like a lot, lot of, of levels, a lot of layers. Yeah. Of, uh, yeah. So, look, if the Wikipedia page said that people are thinking about pirating this game. And <laughs> as we've said here before, sometimes that's okay. <laughs> yeah, so I, don't, I, I, I mean, I don't know. Hope the game's good. Yeah. Uh, October, uh, November, and December, this list says nothing is coming up. So. I feel like that happens a lot. Yeah, they, they announce it later. In yeah, the year. especially, like, so early in the year. Because, hmm. like... Down further, there's a bunch of games coming out in this year that don't have release dates yet, like Arc 2, uh, Beyond Good and Evil 20th Anniversary, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, Dustborn, um, Frostpunk 2, Hades 2. Hades 2 is a big one. Yeah. Is that slated for this year? This year. Okay. Um, Hyperlight Breaker is, yeah, by the people. It's, it's Hyperlight Drifter. Yeah. Hyperlight Drifter was very good. So Hyperlight Breaker is probably going to be good. Um, Metro Awakening, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, um, Lollipop Chainsaw Repop, Multiverse is coming back, the uh, Paper Mario 1000 Year Door remake, um, Penny's Big Breakaway. Penny's Big Breakaway. Sonic oh, Star Wars Outlaws oh, and, and Hunters. Outlaws is allegedly coming out this year. Yeah. yeah, I'm interested to see more gameplay. I can't mm-hmm. imagine Ubisoft pulling that one off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Star Wars Hunters has been announced for, like, ever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, that's... Indiana Jones is supposed to come out this year. Um, this year? Yeah. My God. This year. Uh, yeah. So, okay. there's still a lot of unknowns. This is the year of the third parties. Yeah. Looking like. Uh... So it's it's not looking like that bad of a year. It's not looking like that bad, but it's also not looking like last year. No, last year was insane. Yeah. Last year had so much crazy stuff. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see a year like last year for a very long time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um anyway, what's that? Okay. Let's uh I guess we can go through the uh list of the highlights from the big Xbox announcement that happened. Oh yes, what a, what an important podcast that they had. I remember this day. Yep. I had uh we we thought that a uh Nintendo Direct might happen. Yep. So I had notifications for the Nintendo Twitter account set on my phone mm-hmm. so that if they tweeted anything, I would know about it. Yeah. And they tweeted a whole bunch of just nothing. Yeah. A whole bunch <laughs> of garbage. A bunch of like uh, not unimportant, but like not anything that like would get people like overly excited. No. Shiny Pikachu's are available in the Hydella region. Yeah. <laughs> like shit like that. Uh so 
that was nothing. And then at 3 p.m., Xbox was going to have a big announcement. Yeah. The announcement was going to take the form of a podcast. The podcast ended up being a 20-minute long podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows podcasts have to go at least an hour and a half. I couldn't find it. Like, I didn't even, like, see it on their YouTube channel. Yeah, like, you had to keep refreshing the page. I was waiting for it to go on uh, Apple Podcasts so I can listen to it in my car ride home. Hmm. Um, but it never did. So I had to just watch, you know, stream the YouTube video while I'm driving. Very weird. Yeah. Uh, but everybody was waiting for this Xbox announcement because Phil, we talked about this last episode. Phil Spencer was straight up like, we know people think we're going to release stuff on other consoles. We have a plan and we'll talk all about it on, th- yeah. on Thursday. So he got everybody all excited for this yeah. big announcement. And uh, I'll just skip to what, I'll skip the preamble and go right to what they actually talked about on the show. Sure. Four Xbox games are coming to other platforms. As previously rumored and reported, four Xbox Studio games are coming to other platforms, and they won't say which games they are. Spencer says he doesn't want to take anything away from those teams, implying the announcements will be coming from the developers themselves. He did say that they are not Starfield or Indiana Jones in the Great Circle, which feels like a response to reports that name those games specifically. While the team opted not to name which games are coming to other platforms, much less which consoles they'll be launching on, uh, Spencer said the goal with porting these games outside of the Xbox and Windows ecosystem is the long-term health of the Xbox brand. He also said that he expects exclusivity across the video game industry to shrink further in the next 5-10 to years. As for why the four unnamed games make sense uh, as multi-platform titles, Spencer said that these games have been exclusive to Xbox and PC for over a year. Two of them are community-driven games, as well as first iterations of franchises that Microsoft has uh, wants to invest in further. Excuse me. The other two are what Spencer describes as smaller games that were never really meant to be built as platform exclusives with their, all their fanfare typically associated with marquee titles, um, but were passion projects for the teams behind them. Uh, Spencer ends this segment saying he believes bringing these games to other platforms will help bring in more players to the Xbox brand, but also says that these four games aren't a promise of more games coming to other systems in the future. So we all tuned into this podcast to hear Phil Spencer say, we're bringing these games to these systems. And what he basically said was, yes, we're doing it. No, we're not telling you what it is. That's it. <laughs> but there was a leak that we know basically what the four games says are. what the four games are. Uh, uh, do we know off the top of our heads? Grounded, Grounded which is a, mostly a multiplayer game. So yeah, that makes sense. Uh, sea of Thieves, again, another one. Those are the yeah. two like community games. Yeah. And then I think the other two are, like we talked about last week, Peniment and Hi-Fi Rush. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Th- th- those are the four that are rumored. And, and that, I think... Those all make the most sense. Yeah. I would say that that's a pretty safe bet that those yeah. are the ones that are going. Um, I mean, I keep bringing up Helldivers, but it did so good for PlayStation to yeah. release that. That's a multiplayer game, and releasing that on PC as well opened it up to a lot more people, and it kind of flooded the servers and made it impossible to play, but it made it really popular. Yeah, and I think so. doing that with Sea of Thieves and Grounded will like do wonders for those games as well, putting them on other systems. And I think, you know, Hi-Fi Rush and Peniment, I know Hi-Fi Rush didn't hit like a lot of sales targets, so putting them on other systems might help them hit those sales targets. Yeah. Those are those are games that like need bigger audiences. Like Starfield like is an Xbox exclusive, but it was a successful Xbox exclusive. Indiana Jones is a big name, a big property from a big first party developer. It's going to do well mm-hmm. on Xbox. Those don't need to go multi-platform. A game like uh Hi-Fi Rush or Peniment do need as much exposure as possible. Yeah, Hi-Fi Rush I think uh would make a lot of sense on something like yeah. the switch i think that'll that'll be big uh and we'll probably hear more about that on uh tomorrow yeah i, I think the one of the people th- are theorizing why uh phil spencer didn't come out and name the games is because they were waiting for the nintendo direct for to announce that hi-fi rush and grounded were coming to other systems yeah and there you can almost like hear the resentment in his voice that he had to do this it's like i think this podcast was going to be for everything else that they were going to talk about but he just had to like come down out of his office and just like, look, motherfuckers. Okay, yes, we're bringing other games to other platforms. I mean, this is like the hundredth time he's had to deal with these sort of yeah. leaks and all this speculation and stuff. Yeah, probably so goddamn sick of it. Um, okay, so that that's the big news. Okay. Um, then the next thing they talked about was Diablo Four is going to be the first Activision Blizzard game coming to Game Pass 
It's coming uh, March 28th. Okay. Woo. All right, Ooh, cool. Yay. Um, the influx of layoffs in 2023 play, uh, played into the decision to go multi-platform. Spencer says that despite the number of big games in 2023, the industry didn't grow, which resulted in layoffs, including those at Microsoft. According to him, the company needs to expand beyond Xbox's player base in order to keep the company healthy enough to maintain jobs. He says, when you think about uh, the, a healthy industry, I want players who believe that they will find the best games on the platforms that they love. I want people who invest their careers in working here to feel like this is a place that they can be successful. And that, and that really is down to being a part of an industry that is growing. If you listen to Lisa Sue, the AMD CEO, she'll say that AMD powered consoles are likely to decline in 2024. I think there's an amazing set of games coming in 2024, but if we don't get to growing as an industry, uh, the industry will struggle. And today there's really two choices on how you grow the industry. Do you say I have a fixed number of players and the players we have today and, uh, and do I find a new ways to monetize those players to get more money from the players I have? Or do you think about it? How do I expand the business I have by finding new players and adding those uh, to the base of players that already play? Our focus on Xbox uh, for the last dec decade has really been the latter point of how do we make sure Xbox is growing? Growing for our players, growing for our creators so that these people are finding success on our platform, uh, which will grow the Xbox business and the Xbox in a position to be very strong for years and decades to come. So his idea of trying to prevent more layoffs and just basically have more revenue coming is to put their games on more platforms, more systems. And that does make sense. I'm going to skip to the end where it says Xbox will release 10 games this year. Okay. Uh, Hellblade 2 and Indiana Jones are coming this year, but then Matt Booty says hey. that there's 10 games across 2024. That's uh, a lot different than what Sony said. Right. <laughs> well, there were the other games that were announced in the developer direct, like um, Hellblade, Hellblade 2, mm -hmm. and Ascend was the other one, or Avowed. Yeah, not all of them are going to be big games. No. Uh, but still, uh, I mean, this is good news for xbox because they haven't had anything in the yeah. past couple of years so th th at least now they're 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 making oh some, yeah definitely they're, they're 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 picking things back up yeah uh, this is a good opportunity for xbox to get a little closer to, to play catch up to get a little closer yeah. to playstation you know they're not gonna surpass them this isn't no. a time to like shit all over playstation yeah. but uh this is a time to play a little bit of catch up at least mm -hmm. um and that's basically it. It also says Xbox is still investing in hardware with news on that front this holiday. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Beyond that, it's also working on a next gen Xbox, which will be the largest technical leap you've ever seen in a hardware generation, according to Sarah Bond. Yeah, that sounds like the biggest load of bullshit I've ever heard. <laughs> How could you have the biggest technical leap of a console now? Like, yeah, we've seen that al already. I was playing. There's no way you can achieve the technical leap that like you know snes n64 had or yeah. like or something like that i was playing uncharted lost legacy second genesis to sega dreamcast yeah. like come the fuck on i was playing uncharted lost legacy recently on it's a playstation 4 game and i'm playing on my ps5 i'm playing the playstation 4 version of the game because i didn't pay the ten dollars upgraded to the ps5 version because mm -hmm. i am cheap however that game looked more next gen than some actual next gen games I've played. Yeah. That game still looked gorgeous, and that is again a PlayStation 4 game. So I don't know, I don't understand what next generational leap you can possibly bring that can make these games look any better than they already do. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, we talk about this all the time, the difference between the, the console generations and, mm -hmm. and each one, each console generation seems to has like have like a defining feature. Yeah. And this generation's feature is lighting. <laughs> I don't even think it's that. I like the SSDs. Like yeah, that's the defining yeah. feature, but like that's not something you see really. Yeah. That's something you experience. Yeah. It's because they could load assets a lot, yeah. a lot quicker. But it's it's the last generation, it was particle effects. Yeah. Because you had like Rezo gun with like yeah. all crazy particle effects. And Knack. Don't forget Knack. I can't forget Knack. This generation though, it's literally like RTX ray tracing yeah. and lighting. That's literally 
what everybody's going nuts about. Yeah. It's, Which, yeah, it's good, and it makes the games look impressive, but, like, it only goes so far. Yeah, and a lot of games, like, you can see games with ray tracing and with the nice lighting, and uh, you can see games that don't have that, but are stylized in a way where they almost look like they have that, mm -hmm. and they look awesome. Yeah. So there are games with ray tracing that look worse than games without ray tracing. It's, it's not it's not yeah. the one thing that's going to make your game look amazing, mm -hmm. you know? It could, yeah. but it also, you know, your game just might look like shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to fix it. So I don't know what the hell they could mean by this, the greatest technical leap. Yeah. I, I can't imagine that being a thing. Yeah. Especially them announcing it this year. That's, this is crazy. Well, they're announcing hardware this year. They didn't that's crazy. Yeah. So I don't know if that's going to be the rumored um next iteration of the xbox the cylinder the cylinder yeah yeah the discless cylinder they gotta have a streaming box they yes but they gotta have that up their sleeve yeah like they they were working on it they canned it because it was getting too expensive but i think maybe now like the price has calmed down enough where they could release it no word on a handheld or anything no they have no no they should yeah they, they don't but care. um also the last thing uh they want to respect the the library players that built you know just keeping backwards compatibility a thing, making sure that you can bring your your game purchases from one system to the next. That's all well and good. Um, I will note that um, they ended the backwards compatibility program for 360 games and original Xbox games. So unless you can bring that back in some capacity, I don't believe you're, you know, you say you respect players' libraries, but you're not respecting them enough is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I don't know. I mean... I want them to be able to support backwards compatibility as much as possible. And yeah. in an ideal world, everything will just work across all platforms. Uh, but in a, in a wacky world with all these licensing issues and stuff and, and, and running a company where you can't put that much resources in something that not a lot of people are going to use anyway, mm -hmm. I understand why they would can the Xbox 360 stuff. Um, they don't ha they didn't have to officially announce it they could have been like hey uh, you know uh, uh we're putting it on the back burner if something comes up we'll still yeah make it work and whatever but i mean most stuff works yeah there's not much that doesn't yeah um but it is still sad to see them not supporting that uh speaking of backwards compatibility why don't we uh yeah backlog 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 backlog, backlog! backlog! Hey, it's hey. Backlog, everybody. There, we're back with the Backlog. What yeah. are we doing? What is the Backlog, Will? The Backlog is a show on this channel um, where we go through our entire video game collection. Every game we've ever bought, we put into an Excel sheet um, to catalog everything. And today, we're going to pick one at random and play it, regardless of whether or not we've played it. <laughs> uh, we're not going to play it. We're not going to play what we're talking about, it. about it, yes. Uh, what? How many games do we have? Uh. I I haven't added games. Hold on, I opened up the wrong. Where is it? I haven't it added games since the last. Time I, we did I tried this, to so. like. I got. I gotta do. I that. tried to like you know clean it up a little bit, get rid of mm -hmm. some games that like we're not like some random ass iOS games that we're not gonna talk. We about. had a lot of mobile games. Yeah, yes. we did. Um, hold on, I got it. it it's a lot. It was like nine hundred something. Okay, <laughs> nine hundred and something. Wait, wait, wait. I uh, gotta put it in my random number generator, then I will pick a random number and we will 900 pick the game. 902. 902. Okay. Yeah. And generate. And 260. Uh, 260. And that is Mario Golf for the Nintendo 64. 64. Okay. Yeah. 64 one was pretty good. I don't remember the difference between the Mario Golf games. Uh, this one in particular, it's, uh, I have in brackets, it's the Japanese version. Oh, I never played it. I just, I, I think I, I mean, I played Mario Golf. Right. I definitely never played the, the Japanese, Japanese version. cartridge that we have. So then why, why did you get the Japanese version? Uh, it was cheap at, uh, I think we got it at, what was the retro game store we did the backlog at? Oh, uh, video game trading post. Yeah. Video game trading post here okay. on Long Island. I think yeah. I bought it there because I just liked the, it was cheap and I liked the way that it looked. Right. Uh, so. Here it is, I'm pulling up gameplay now. Okay, so uh, Mario Golf and NS64. I'm going to be honest with you, I did not play this as much as I played Mario Tennis on NS64, which we don't have. So, 
what are we blockbuster it we definitely blockbuster def this we definitely blockbuster this we definitely blockbuster mario tennis so this is notable for having actual dudes like you're you you got mario you got yoshi you got luigi but then yeah. you have like tim <laughs> just, <laughs> He's just got regular fucking guys, just guys yeah. man playing the game here's a guy uh-huh um i don't know why uh but that's how it was. Okay. I like Mario golf games a lot. I like I just, I just like golf games. Yeah. Uh, for some reason. Uh, but yeah, and Mario has some of the the best golf games. Yeah. The latest one for the Nintendo Switch, uh, was fine. It was fine playing that with people, but uh, it wasn't that good. I, I remember the 3DS one being great. Yeah. Okay. I played that one a lot. Because I was gonna say Mario Golf on the N64 was the first Mario golf game. And some people say it's still the only good one. <laughs> I don't remember it being the first one. Because there was one for the for Game Boy. Color. There was a Game Boy Color Game one. Game Boy Color? Yeah, maybe it came out of this, around the same time. Maybe. No, Game Boy Advance was the first Golf one. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mario Golf uh, Advance Tour on the Game Boy Advance. Okay. Uh... Gotta be honest, I don't remember much about this other than that you play as actual dudes actual sometimes. Actual dudes. Mario um, 64 Golf Players characters. choose from a variety of characters, including Mario, Luigi, Peach, Yoshi, Wario, and a few original characters. Players can then select from a number of courses which have features adapted to the Nintendo world. As a pick-up-and-play game, it simplifies the game of golf without its com uh, complicated real-life aspects. Although the game is easy to play and simple in appearance, its engine has many variables that can be that can affect a shot, such as wind strength and direction, uh, dictated by a boo, rain, uh, rain, characters, individual attributes, spin on the ball, and relief in the land. So I have uh, the characters here. Mm -hmm. We got Plum. All right. We got Charlie. <laughs> We got Peach, we got Baby Mario, we got Luigi, we got Yoshi, we got Sonny. Hey, Sonny! We got Wario, we got Harry. <laughs> <laughs> we got Mario, we mm -hmm. got Maple, mm -hmm. we got DK, we got Bowser, we got Metal Mario, we got... There's a lot of characters. Oh, Jesus. We got Kid, we got Joe, we got Sherry, and we got Azalea. Well, okay. None of these characters come back ever <laughs> so like i feel like there's a little bit of right. missed opportunity to have these characters somewhere else so i looked i'm looking it up Mar the mario golf wikipedia page combines the n64 version of the game and the game boy color version of the game so there was a game you said it oh there is game boy there color. is a game Boy color version yeah okay so i wasn't fucking crazy no but it came they came out at the same time okay I, that's what i thought yeah okay the game boy color version of the game is a full-on RPG. Okay. That's that's like the unique thing I remember about that. Like the Game Boy Color version of a full-on RPG where you, you do golf in addition to like RPG shit, like leveling up your character. I need to try that. Yeah. I don't know. I remember playing the 3DS one a lot. And I remember I remember playing it on a, on f flights whenever we, we, had, yeah. we were flying around for whatever reason. I was fucking raging so hard <laughs> alone in my little, my little plane seat. Right. Um... But anyway, uh, yeah, I don't remember much about actually playing this game other than, I mean, it, it, it shows the, the regular shit that you do in a Mario yeah. golf game. You, you, you have the little slider at the bottom, you hit it at the right time, and it has like the grid on the ground yeah. that shows you what the ball's going to do. Uh, and you see that in every other Mario uh, golf game since then. And also the Wii Sports uh, yes. golf games and stuff. And I also like the Wii Sports Golf, and I also like uh, the Nintendo Switch Sports Golf. But mm -hmm. the Nintendo Switch Sports Golf, not as good as the Wii Sports Golf. Ah. So yeah, uh, I'll, I, I kind of want to play this again. Uh, I, but well, this is making me want to play the Game Boy Color version, honestly. Well, lucky for you, the N64 version is available um, as part of Switch Online plus the expansion Really? Pack. Yes. Oh. So you can, you can just play then it there. Then I'll just do that, and then yeah. I'll dabble in and in that. Yeah, and okay. then I'm sure, you, I'm sure you can find the Game Boy Color version of... Uh, I have. I definitely yeah, have. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 I have a flash card with, like, everything on it. Yeah. Uh, there's not as many Game Boy Color games as you think. There's not as many Game Boy Color games that you want to play. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, uh, hey, uh, people watching uh, the VOD, thanks for watching the backlog. Yeah. Uh, come back. Uh, come watch podcasts sometime, won't you? Yeah. We, t- we talk about other things. Modern about games, things. specifically. Yeah. And maybe next time on the backlog, we'll have a game that uh, we actually played a decent amount of. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks for being here. Goodbye. Bye. Not you, though. Yeah. You're, we're staying. We're just saying goodbye to people who only watch the backlog. Uh, anyway uh what's next what do we what do we what is next uh oh i I meant to bring this so that i I can just give it back to you and you can figure it out because the playstation portal has been hacked what hack sword so this was just a tweet that every i haven't gotten a tweet sent to me this much since mario maker 2 was announced (laughs) uh this is from adam Wen uh or the flow zero who says, after more than a month of hard work, PPSSPP, which is a PSP <laughs> emulator, it yeah. is not somebody calling a cat. Yeah. Psst, 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 psst. Uh, PPSSPP is running natively on PlayStation Portal. Yes, we hacked it. Help from XYZ and Zeta2, some other people who, who worked on it. I have the, um, the Verge article that uh, goes over this. Uh, two Google engineers have managed to get the PSPP emulator running natively on the PlayStation portal, allowing a Grand Theft Auto PSP version to run on the portal without Wi-Fi streaming. Uh, Win uh, confirmed that the exploit is all software-based, so it doesn't require any hardware modification like additional chips or soldering. Only a photo of Grand Theft Auto Liberty City stories running on the portal has been released so far, but Win may release some videos to demonstrate the exploit uh, at the weekend. Uh Wynn is a cloud uh, vulnerability researcher at Google, and he has worked with a fellow Google security engineer, uh, Callie C- uh, Svensson, on the PlayStation Portal project. Wynn, better known as The Flow, has discovered multiple PS4 and 5 exploits in the past. He's due to detail a new PS4 exploit in May. So, a PS4 exploit? Yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, they didn't really give any information about this at all. No. And it's making me think that we're not even going to ever see this in a way that's going to work for anybody. Uh, he, he's, he said, uh, there's no release planned in the near future and there's much more work to be done. Right. Also, there's no shot. This runs good. Uh, <laughs> it's PSP. So it's not that it's not going to require that much power. It's right. just PSP, but this is an incredibly low powered, uh, device yeah it's just for streaming uh and i have you know android devices that are made for game emulation that can't do psp good i have a lot of different ones that can't do psp good uh so i don't think this is you know gonna be crazy and i also don't think we're gonna end up uh uh, seeing it in, in the near future i don't think they're gonna crack this thing open and let us uh uh you know put our own stuff on there anytime well i think this is the first step towards that yeah absolutely i think that this is you know it's one small step towards trying to do something with your playstation portal other than stream your playstation 5 signal to it yeah i mean this is good news overall the ideal situation for a playstation portal would be to do some sort of dual boot or something where i could still use it as a playstation portal but then also sideload some stuff onto it and have it natively so like yeah. let's say i'm on a um i have my playstation portal and i like streaming my games and stuff but oh no i'm going on a flight yeah now i have my portal but i can't connect it to the internet well now i can play like my super nintendo games yeah. or something like that um i mean the ideal situation for a playstation portal would be a playstation vita 2 yes <laughs> but it's such weird irony that we're sitting here in the year 2024 with all of the technology at our disposal yeah. and we're going nuts over a guy who hacked a brand new PlayStation device yeah. to play an old game <laughs> shittily. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's... And people are like, yeah! <laughs> because yeah. the fucking thing sucks that bad that we're excited that it could play a 15-year-old game. I mean, also, too, Sony, um, the way they handle backwards compatibility isn't great because they, like, hide it behind a massive paywall. If you want to play older games, you got to subscribe to the PlayStation Plus Premium. Uh, no, Extra. And if you want to play the really old stuff, you got to subscribe to Premium. Yeah, but then you got to play it through your PlayStation 5 through your portal. Yeah. So if finding a way to do that natively the way it should have been done in the first yeah. place is nice uh 
Ishrios in the chat says it's got a Snapdragon chip in it, so it might not be too bad. No, there's a there is a wide spectrum of Snapdragon processors. Snapdragons, yeah. it's just the type of process. Isn't com- it just a company? I think it's the company. No, Qualcomm's, Qualcomm's the company. The company. Snapdragon is yeah. it's, it's like a Pentium. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're old. These people <laughs> might not know what Pentium is. Uh, f- Core i whatever. GTX. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Wide spectrum of Snapdragon devices. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it could absolutely be shitty. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not doing this, obviously, because there's no... there's no uh, Nothing's been released Nothing's yet. been yeah. released. There are other, I'm sure other people are working on mm-hmm. ways to crack this thing open. Uh, until then, you can continue to use my PlayStation Portal. Cool, great. Actually, you say you don't even use it. You use a uh, Steam Deck. I didn't have my Steam Deck the other night. I had to. Ha- I've been having to have my portal next to me while I game on my TV because the- I don't know if I talked about it on the channel. You talked this- about it on your other podcast, yeah. the Nintendo <laughs> podcast. <laughs> the signal keeps cutting out. I know I've talked to you, you about yeah, it. Yeah, but you didn't tell me. I don't think you told me that the HDMI cable that you used is 25 feet long. If you told me that, <laughs> I would have said it's the HDMI cable. But it was I think you told me that HDMI has a 10 foot limit. But then why was I able to buy a 25 foot cable? Because they sell garbage. It worked on my PlayStation 4 mm-hmm. and it works with my Switch and it works with my analog. It just doesn't work with my current gen system. It's too much data that cannot travel right. that far. Yeah. You can get a powered uh, like booster or something. Right. It's probably best to just limit it to ten feet. Though. Right, but now I gotta. But the thing is, I don't. I think I need more than ten feet the way my my setup is because I gotta connect it to the TV, up the wall, through the ceiling, mm-hmm. back behind the couch, out to the PlayStation. You gotta you gotta get a booster in the middle. Yeah, I somewhere. got yeah, but I gotta take the TV oh! off the wall. Oh no. Shut the fuck up. Okay. Get uh, you do a HDMI to Ethernet converter. I've seen those. Those are those are cool. Yeah. Those those work cool. Okay. I've never used one, but they Me seem either. cool. Yeah. Because s- Ethernet, you can go as far as you want. Yeah. So regardless, though, I gotta I gotta take the TV off the wall. I gotta like fish cable out through the hole. I gotta. I didn't. I don't even know if you know this. I gotta go into my laundry room. I, I gotta go into this. my laundry room, take one of the the panels off the wall in the laundry room to feed the cable through the insulation to the other end. That sounds like a fucking nightmare. Uh, yeah, I I feel like I feel like I should just like I need to actually like make a short film about what I'm talking <laughs> about because every time I like explain it with words, I feel like a crazy person. Um, no, you are. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I mean, it, this is why I play games at a computer desk. <laughs> like, I don't want to have to fuck with all that I shit. I just wanted, like, a nice place to sit down and play my games on a big-ass TV. I know. But that's not that's not an easy thing to do, apparently. No. No. I, I understand. I think your whole rant about that on the Nintendo podcast inspired Wood to uh, run his... his ethernet through through his or, or his hdmi through his wall. he messaged he like messaged me a video of like his setup because he's got his tv on a hinge on like a on a bracket that like comes out yeah and stuff and my tv it's flat against the wall because there's like a you, you you've seen this before it's there's I like put a door. It, didn't i put it yeah, up you helped me there's a door there that you yeah. like you can open to get to the cables and yeah stuff. yeah yeah and the we had to get a bracket that would go over the door yeah. and the only one that they had was a flat mounted one oh uh, okay so if they make one that like hinges out and rotates that goes over the door so they make ones so you know how some people have their tv way too high because it's like over a fireplace or something yeah. they make mounts now that hinge down yes yeah mine angles down yeah, but I'm saying if you hinge it yeah. down even a little bit, you can have the mount up higher than, than right. you would normally do it. My, mine runs through the fucking... Yeah, I... I, don't know, I it I was gotta, a bitch, but I mean, what do you... I got I got things that we, we might have worked on on the house later anyway. Yeah, make them do it. Make them do it. Um, oh. 
When we moved in here, I, I did that and ran the one cable and then never touched anything ever again. Yeah, the whole plan was to just run the cables and never touch it again. But, oh, no, the March <laughs> technology, we got to have 8K 120 frames per second. I got, Wolf I, can go fuck himself. Well, I got, I definitely got HDMI. No, no, I got, I moved into this house a lot later than you moved into yeah. that house. HDMI 2.1 was already a thing. I ran an HDMI 2.1 cable. Yeah. Even though my TV's not right. 120 hertz or anything. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, hey, thank you to the Konami man for the 16 months. Wolf, what's up, Wolf Bros? Just got a new record player, upgraded to a better one. Any album recommendations? Oh, jeez. For a record for player? For, like, vinyl records? I thought I was going to be a vinyl guy, but after, like, four or five albums, I'm like, I'm not doing this. Here's my here's my thing, and I brought this up to people. Oh, boy. Before. I got a thing about, about <laughs> record people. I mean, it's fun to collect physical media. So, yes. like, having a big record is cool. Like, I get that. People who are like, it sounds better. I got an issue with that. <laughs> because most of the shit that you're listening to on these records... If it came out in the last 30 years, mm -hmm. it's being mixed and mastered digitally and recorded right. digitally. So you're just taking the digital recording and you're listening to it in a in an analog. Yeah. So why don't you just take the digital recording and listen to it digitally? I understand the appeal of like, you know, the the texture of the sound of vinyl where like you get the scratching and the popping because it does sound different. Yeah, but that you're just this is sh shittier. That, that you're you're just shittier on purpose. It's it's like people who appreciate who watch movies on VHS because VHS has this very particular look and feel and aesthetic to it. It has a character mm -hmm. to it that you don't get on any of like the digital mediums. I I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's the pretentiousness of the audio files that are like it's the warmth of the of the, it's like no, it's like that's not how it was intended to be listened to though. Yeah, you know. Also, maybe if it's from the fucking seventies, then maybe listening to vinyl records is not as simple as just buying a record play because you get into some of the weeds and this stuff. It's like you gotta get you gotta get the turntable, you gotta get the amplifier, you gotta get the the power box for the speakers i forgot what it's called then you got to get the speakers the preamp. But the preamp that's it but if you get powered speakers you don't need the preamp but you should never buy a turntable with an amplifier no in no, it no, no you can't just get speakers without a preamp <laughs> will you gotta spend fucking eight thousand dollars on the stupid preamp and you better make sure that it's got a brand new tube in it you go to walmart you get the <laughs> get the suitcase uh turntables <laughs> that I are like 50 bucks I think we bought dad one of the suitcases. You bought dad one, okay. yeah. And then my old roommate bought one for himself because that's cool. I'm going to buy one. Yeah. Then he bought one and I had it. I was filming something in the apartment and I had it in a shot. The little suitcase. Yeah. Uh, Vil trucks or whatever. It was, it's, it's, I don't, I don't Vitrola know. Vitrola and Crosley are the two big ones. Vitrola is yeah. the cup. Somebody saw it in a shot and was like, hey, you should have spent more money and gotten an audio technica, this thing. And they sent me a link and I was like, Hey man, shut the fuck up! <laughs> it's not even mine. It's <laughs> it's the music equivalent of, hey, I bought an Xbox. Oh, did you know you can build a PC? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for, yeah, for more money, but you get a better game. Experience. Yes, yes. Um, anyway, they asked what to record answer, we to should answer your question. Honestly, anything made before the year 2000 like specifically anything from the 60s and 70s when vinyl records yeah. were important so like a led zeppelin record or an aerosmith record or a kiss record or a fucking beatles beach boys record the rolling stones older shit will sound the best on vinyl acdc yeah. sounds great on vinyl go to a thrift store or a record store yeah and just get one that has cool album artwork even that too because you can always that's the best part is displaying the album artwork yeah but also you could just get something that's that's crazy you can get some I just, wild i shit. just feel like you're gonna get the most mileage if you get something from the vinyl era if you get like a taylor swift record on vinyl or even if you get like like an like a nirvana record on vinyl it's not gonna be the same as like getting something that was made for vinyl back in the yeah. day. Yeah. That's that's my advice. Go classic rock. They recorded uh Nirvana on tape, I think. Yeah. 
but I, you know, people mostly bought that on CD. Like yeah. it wasn't, and it was made for radio. Really, yeah, it wasn't during the vinyl era. <sighs> Garrison says I'm being triggered right now. Good. I'm seeing a lot of people agreeing in the chat. <laughs> seeing a lot of people agree. Uh, all right. Any, and also Blackbird. Thank you for the 24 months. Anyway. Uh, all right, let's plow through the rest of this nonsense. Uh, there's a new Astro Bot game. Yeah, all that talk about Sony's not coming out with a new game in it, uh, this year. Not true. Sony could be planning to release a new Astro Bot game. Uh, uh, Asobi means to play in Japanese. Cool. <laughs> the, the company revealed on Wednesday it had no new plans to release any new major uh, franchises like God of War or Spider-Man. However, Sony may be planning to release unannounced games from other established, albeit less high-profile IPs, according to Giant Bomb reporter Jeff Grubb. We already know Rise of Ronin. Rise of Ronin is coming. We all we know that Concord, one of the live service games, is scheduled for release this year. That stuff that's scheduled for sure, he said. And then it's like there might be a new game entry in franchises that already exist. They just might not be as major as uh, uh, God of War or Spider-Man. Um, Grub added, I've heard maybe Astro does happen this year. So if it happens, that's a big, that's pretty big for me. Uh, I get why Sony's not thinking that it's a major one for us. Um, at least not yet. Hopefully they could turn it into a major one and then a lot, uh, and then, and then a lot of this changes around. The last entry in the Astro series was of course, 2020's Astro Playroom, a 3d platformer that comes preloaded on the PlayStation 5. A job listing last year suggested the Tokyo-based studio is working on a new 3D action game. This could be it. This could be the one. Astro's Playroom 2. The, the name of the team is Team Asobi. That's why I yes. brought that up. <laughs> uh, that's cool. I'd like to see a bigger uh, uh, Astro's Playroom. I liked Astro, Astro's, Astro's Playroom. Playroom is good. Astro's it's, Play was really good. It's one of the best games on the PlayStation 5, and it's the easiest to jump into, and it's one that I use the most when I'm like, Showing off playing a PlayStation yeah. game. Um, and I will 100% play a newer one if they make a new Astro's Playroom. It would have to be something that like just goes beyond what Astro's Playroom... Because Astro's Playroom, while great, it is... It's two things. It's a tech demo for the PlayStation 5, and it's a PlayStation History Museum. Yeah. So Astro's Playroom, it's got to... A sequel to Astro's Playroom really has to go beyond that. It should still be a museum and a tech demo, but it needs to be the best tech demo and the best museum in video games, basically. It needs to be Astro's Playroom Odyssey. Yeah. But I'm cool with that. Yeah. I mean, you don't even have to get as far as Odyssey did. Yeah. You know, it just do fucking Bowser's Fury. Yeah. <laughs> do, do, that would be cool. Do Astro's Playroom Bowser's Fury. Mm -hmm. I'd be happy with that. Um, okay. Next up, there's also, oh, we're just doing Alan Wake 2 sales. Yes. Oh, what, before we do that. Okay. Let's, we haven't talked about the Nintendo Direct or the, oh, yeah. or the PlayStation <laughs> Presents. That sounds important that we should talk about. Okay. Yeah. There's, um, Nintendo is going to do a partner direct tomorrow, February 21st. And the Pokemon company is doing a Pokemon Presents February 27th. People are... Uh, when, when I when I so it's a partner direct. Yes, yeah, so that that means all the third party companies that are partnering with Nintendo are going to showcase. Them. Another weird thing about last week was that Nintendo just straight up put a lot of stuff on Twitter. They just yeah. announced a couple of things. They showed another Princess Peach's Playtime like trailer mm -hmm. or something. Um, so they were just dropping stuff. Yeah. It wasn't as crazy as they've done in the past where instead of doing a nintendo direct they just dropped a couple of trailers like uh i think uh paper mario was announced on twitter it wasn't in yeah a, it wasn't in a direct or anything it wasn't as crazy as that but it seems to me like maybe they didn't have something ready maybe they wanted to do an actual direct and they didn't have it it's not the big thing ready right so they were just like forget it we're not going to do it and they announced everything else outside of it on twitter mm -hmm. and the problem is they have contractual obligations for third parties uh and we've seen them do this before they're just like fuck it partner direct yeah so maybe this was supposed to happen last week and they took out all their first party stuff and said fuck it it's a it's a yeah. third party direct now that seems that seems like the most likely reason that they just weren't ready i i know there was like rumor that like they did it for microsoft because like Microsoft was going to have their 
uh, podcast to explain their business strategy going forward and Nintendo decided to hold off because they're probably going to announce Hi-Fi Rush in the partner presents. Yeah, that's probably one of the contractual obligations. Do, yeah, but I don't think Nintendo said, hey, Microsoft, buddy, we feel bad for you. We will put our entire direct on pause. No. Yeah. Defo, no. Absolutely not. They do not care. They would have gone through with it anyway. No, definitely what happened was uh, they had a direct plan and they just don't have this the the, the goods yeah. ready yeah something's up i mean so when i looked at the tweet that was announcing the direct uh the partner direct all the top tweets say switch to baby which, which i think is a troll but it's hard to tell you never know because like every single nintendo direct that happens whether it's the indie showcases whether it's the partner showcases people have like the most wild expectations like it's gonna it's an indie direct and everyone goes this is the one where they announced odyssey 2 this is the, this is it yeah and, it, and it's it's fucking like uh the messenger and sea of stars and all this like they didn't announce odyssey 2 yeah nintendo sucks you know yeah everybody keep your expectations at a bare minimum yeah i mean be excited but like reasonably excited yeah so and then the Pokemon presents, I, I forgot if it was AJ or Kevin Kenson on Twitter who said it, but it reminded me the Pokemon, when the Pokemon presents happen, it's everything. It's not just the games. It's TV shows they're working on. It's brand deals they have with clothing companies. It's apps that are in development for your phone. It's toys. It's maybe a game or two. It's everything. Yeah. And I think every time they do a Pokemon Presents, I'm guilty of this too because I just expect them to talk about the next Pokemon game, what comes after Scarlet and Violet. Yeah. And I think that's part of the reason why Pokemon Presents always suck to me. <laughs> yeah, it's we, a lot of crap. It's a lot of crap. It's a lot of crap. And, and uh, the, I, I hate Pokemon now, but, <laughs> but you got to give them a little bit of credit when they launch a game, even if it's a shitty fucking mobile game, they will support that game until it's dead on the ground. Yeah. They all, they've been, they just all, and all these partner directs for the last couple of years, they're talking about uh, the, 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 the trainer battling game, the Pokemon EX or whatever yeah. the fuck on the phone. They're talking about updates to that. They got Pokemon Cafe Remix updates and all this yeah. shit. They, they, uh, Pokemon Smile. Now you got. Now you can frown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, got, they got. They're always working on their shit that you would think was a failure. Yeah. You know. So uh, I want to give them credit for that, but yeah. uh, you know, we just want to hear about the new game that's coming. Yeah. Out. And I hope that there is no game. I hope that there's nothing. I hope that they take a break and, or, and work on the know, next if one. If it's not going to be, the, you know, the sequel to Scarlet and Violet, like make it an exciting game, like uh, Pokemon Pinball Returns or some shit like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like something that would like be worthwhile, like something people would want to play on the Switch. So. What people are looking for is the, the successor to Scarlet and Violet. Right. Uh, it's, pro it's probably going to be an another, you know, colored game. Yeah. Then you have uh, people think that they're remaking Black and White. Yes. That's the next remake that they're mm -hmm. going to do. So that would probably end up being this year. But I hope that they just take some time on that. Yeah. Um, or I'm sure they probably threw it over to a third party. Yeah. But I mean, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl was bad. Yeah. So hopefully not those. Or people. maybe they'll announce all the Game Boy Color and Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games on Switch Online. That would be the best thing to happen yes. in, in this direct. If they announce a new game, I don't even give a shit. Yeah. If they announce the old games in a way that I could acquire them. Yeah. Sure. Because now you can't get them at all anymore. Correct. It's impossible to get them. And not just the old games, but like the remakes of the old games. Like Fire Red and Leaf Green on GBA, yeah. those two, because people would want to play those over the original. Yeah. Make a Game Boy Classic. Yeah. Okay. Let's plow through the rest of this. All show. right. Alan Wake 2 is developer Remedy's fastest selling game to date, but the studio still uh, is still to recuperate the project's development and marketing costs. In its latest financial report, Remedy said Alan Wake 2 has now sold 1.3 million units. Uh, with 1 million of those units occurring by the end of last year, 
be this equates to 50 percent more copies and over three times more digital copies of alan wake 2 sold in the game's first two months than its previous release control managed in its first four months although it's worth noting alan wake 2 was a digital only release oh. control has gone on to sell over four million units and remedy said it expected a similar trend with alan wake 2 as a great game can generate excellent excellent long tail sales but of course games lose value over time so copies sold after price drop uh generates less revenue than at launch remedy ceo taro vitrala said that the company ha was happy with the start of alan wake 2 sales the price point has also remained at a high level and the game was already recouped a significant part of the development and marketing expenses we will continue to develop the game to uh to serve existing fans and attract new players and expect the game to continue selling well Following Alan Wake 2's launch, Remedy Team is also looking uh, to its other franchises. Uh, Vitrala st uh, stated the studio's other projects, uh, Corridor, Control 2, and Max Payne 1 and 2 Remake, have all increased development pace thanks to additional staff moving over from working on Alan Wake 2. We expect these projects to reach their development stages. The next development stages during the first half of 2024. The CEO also added that growing and expanding on both Control and Alan Wake will be a key part of Remedy's future. Indeed, two paid DLC expansions are on the way for Alan Wake 2. The first, Night Springs, will allow you to play as several familiar characters from the world of Alan Wake as you experience the unexpected, the unexplainable and multiple self-contained episodes of Night Springs. Um, this, that will be followed by a second expansion known as the Lake House. This expansion will see players explore a mysterious facility um, situated on the shores of Cauldron Lake set up by an independent government organization to conduct secret research. So Alan Wake 2 sold really well. Uh, it's helping Remedy move on to their other games that they're in development, but it still didn't sell enough to completely recoup its development and marketing fund. Right. It's on the way, but they still have a ways to go. That's, that goes back to what we've been talking about so far, where a game that can sell 1.3 million units and still be considered like in danger. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's it's hard to grasp how these i mean these publishers have so much goddamn money that they have to uh fund the developer and then take a what like four year loss until they yeah. finally like make the money back like yeah um but that's how they make more and more money every yeah. year is, is they spend more and more money well i remember the, I've, i know i brought this up before the reason why alan wake 2 took so long to make was Sam Lake said years ago, Alan Wake 2 was profitable, but it took so long for the game to become profitable. You mean the first The Alan first Wake? one, yeah. It took so long for that game to become profitable that they couldn't just make a sequel right away. They had to move on to something else. Yeah. So they paused that development on Alan Wake 2. They had to make Quantum Break, and then they made Control, and then now they finally were able to make Alan Wake 2. Yeah. So ga games have to like become profitable very quickly in order for a franchise to continue. Yeah, this is why I think they should just fucking cool it a little bit. Yeah. Make smaller games. Right? Yeah. I don't mind if the game's amazing in four hours. I'd rather it be. What's that tweet? <laughs> What's that tweet? I want short games with worse graphics uh, that come out more frequently or whatever. Yeah. 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 I want all that. People want that. Yeah. All right. Um... Next, we also got Respawn making a Mandalorian. We also want this. Insider gaming <laughs> sources have revealed that uh, Respawn Entertainment is developing a first-person Star Wars Mandalorian game that is in its early stages of development. According first person? Yeah. Okay. According to its sources, the game will see the player take control of Mandalorian bounty hunter Unclear Who, set during the time uh, at the end of uh, set during a time when the Galactic Empire is dominating across the galaxy, it's your job as a bounty hunter to capture bounties dead or alive for cash rewards. As first reported by Venture Beat Chef Grub, the Venture game... Beat. I guess he's just anywhere. <laughs> he's just anywhere he wants. Yeah, to be. I didn't know he worked for Venture Beat. Uh, according to the internet's Jeff Grub, wait, game... is he Giant Bomb or is he not anymore? I don't know, man. I think he just is. <laughs> Uh, the game is was being led by Respawn creative director Mohamed Alavi, who left the studio to pursue his next adventure. According to Grubb, who didn't disclose its Star Wars game at the time, but has recently, the game will be focused on mobility and style as guiding principles. Uh, 
The game, the game's high mobility has been made possible storytelling wise thanks to the Mandalorian jetpack, which allows players to perform uh, horizontal dashing, vertical jumping, boosting, sliding, uh, and more. Sources describe the game as very fast paced and a, and as such will reward players who play in the style. For example, the player's health will mainly regenerate based on successive kills. So yeah, uh, that's awesome. I'm I'm down with the first person Mandalorian game. That would be interesting. If, if Respawn's doing it, they can pretty much just take Titanfall 2, take oh, out the yeah. mech, and just put a, a Mandalorian in it. Yeah. So I'm down with that. It could very well be the Star Wars 1313 we didn't get, because that was supposed to be a Boba Fett game, but yeah. like with, with a different Mandalorian in it. It doesn't say it's going to be the Mandalorian. Yeah. Uh, Pedro Pascal's character. Just that it's going to be a Mandalorian. Yeah, it could so. be. It could be anything. But, uh, I'm sure there will be familiar faces in, in this. Yeah. Uh, f- I s- do you remember in Mandalorian Season 2 when he takes off his helmet to like try to get the computer to scan his face? If you watch the way he like acts during it, he just looks straight. He doesn't like move his eyes a lot. And the reason why he did that is because when he's wearing the helmet, he can only just look straight. And he spent his whole life just wearing the helmet. Uh... So like... Your proof if this is gonna be a true first person Mandalorian game, your peripheral vision is gonna be fucked. Yeah, they got they gotta a make T-shape. Yeah, they gotta put a T shape on the screen. <laughs> like a T shape cutout. Yeah. Okay. So just something to think about. I don't know if the Mandalorian is the best candidate for a first person game, is what I'm trying to say. We are getting some cool ideas for some Star Wars games. I'm excited. Now yeah. Because uh Star Wars had some great games when yes. we were growing up. Mm-hmm. Uh also, we didn't have a lot of Star Wars. There was a, a lull in Star Wars content when we were growing up until yeah. the until the you know the fucking well there was a prequels lull, there was a lull in con- yeah until the prequels and then there was another another lull in content until the sequels yeah and now but yeah. before the prequels and during the prequels we had some great games mm-hmm. that filled some gaps mm-hmm. and then after the prequels we had some games and then they fucking and they 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 ruined everything yeah um so. I'm excited to see more games, but they've been not so great. Well, they've been not so great because EA had the license for yeah. 10 years. Yeah. Um, and we're just now starting to see the license move beyond EA. Yeah. Yes. They with the still, exception of Fallen Order. With the exception so. of Fallen Order and Respawn making these games. Mm-hmm. Um, we got Star Wars Outlaws from Ubisoft. Yeah, I'm does, excited Which for that. doesn't look like shit yet. Yet. Um, yeah. We have Star Wars Eclipse from um Forgot about David that. Cage in his fucking studio. That looks crazy. That looks nuts. Yeah. I'm interested to see what that's gonna be. Um so we're in a I mean, we haven't gotten these games yet, but we're in a better place uh in terms of what Star Wars can be in the video game realm because now there's more variety. There's yeah. the possibility of more variety. Yeah, and I think they see the potential in in mm-hmm. uh, in, in in that. Yeah, and people, pe- we want to be in that world. That's yeah. why Star Wars has been so successful because yeah. the world is so interesting. Um. Okay. Yeah. Uh, go through the dice awards. Actually. Yes, as quickly as possible. Okay, I'll just skip to all the winners. Ach- outstanding what achievement. What is the dice awards? The dice awards is the. That's where like the act the developers and. The people who actually make the games vote on what were the best games of the year were. Yeah, this is this is the game awards for developers by developer. Yes. This is hosted uh, by Greg Miller. Yes. This is uh what Jeff Keeley thinks he's doing, basically. <laughs> um outstanding achievement in animation, the winner was Spider-Man 2. Outstanding achievement in art direction, Alan Wake 2. Outstanding achievement in character, Spider-Man 2, Miles Morales. Uh specifically Miles Morales. In that game. Outstanding achievement in original music, Spider-Man 2. Outstanding achievement in audio design, Spider-Man 2. I'm surprised Spider-Man 2 won uh, as much as it did. cleaning house. Yeah. Uh, outstanding achievement in story, uh, Baldur's Gate 3. That outstanding achievement, outstanding technical achievement, Spider-Man 2. Action game of the year, Spider-Man 2. Adventure game of the year, Tears of the Kingdom. Family game of the year, Mario Wonder. Uh, fighting game of the year, Street Fighter 6. Racing game of the year, Forza Motorsport. Role playing game of the year, Baldur's Gate three, sports game of the year, MLB the Show twenty three. Okay. Uh, pause. I, if you remember a while back when we we're talking about the game awards, they combined sport and racing. 
the dice separates them because they are two separate things and they should be treated as separate things. And there you go. Just notably, that sports game of the year only has three games in it. Well, if those are the only three games that are yeah, worth nominating. No, you're right. You're right. Uh, strategy slash simulation game of the year, Dune Spice Wars, um, immersive reality techno uh, technological achievement, Horizon Call of the Mountain. Oh, you you like that game? Nope. <laughs> Bullshit ass game. Immersive reality game of the year, Asgard's Wrath Two, outstanding achievement for an indie game, Cocoon. Mobile game of the year, what the car? Oh, uh, <laughs> I didn't know that. Wait, I gotta get that. Is that is that good? What the golf is awesome. Is that oh, that's related? It's gotta be. Because it's what the bat too, and that's oh, the VR version. Okay. So. Okay. Uh online game of the year, Diablo 4. Uh outstanding achievement in game design, Baldur's Gate 3. Outstanding achievement in game direction, Baldur's Gate 3, and game of the year, Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3, once again, sweeps house. Yeah. I Game think house? it looks like Spider-Man 2 won all the technical awards because, in all fairness, that is a technical achievement in terms of, like, a video game. Yeah. I'm downloading What the Car right now. Nice. It is It is the, the, the same. Okay. So there you go. Cool. So Baldur's Gate 3. Hey, I got to play this Baldur's Gate 3 game. Yeah, I yeah. did. It's okay. I, I don't want to play Baldur's Gate. Three. I gotta play a little more of it. Yeah, uh, it's good. Uh, kind of want to play it on the computer. So there's more to click. There's yeah, I play it like... on the Steam Deck. It's not a good controller. And game. I know it's on console now, but that definitely just seems like that is the definition of a CRPG, a computer yeah. role playing game. Yeah, you yeah. need to like sit down at a computer. There's with too a many system. systems. Yeah, and the game doesn't tell you a damn thing about any of the systems, so you just kind of got to figure it out. Yeah. Again, I played for like four hours and didn't realize that I had more than one move. <laughs> um, apparently, there's a PlayStation 5 Pro coming this year. Yeah, Sony, need, about that Sony needs too. to save money. But also, Sony is likely to release a, re a refreshed version of the PlayStation 5 this year, analysts told CNBC. After the company cut its forecast for sales of its flagship console, the move would be designed to boost uh, interest in the PlayStation 5 and offer a souped-up piece of hardware ready for the release of GTA 6 next year, one of the decade's most hotly anticipated games. Sony has not immediately re responded for comment. Uh, I don't know how much I believe this. I don't know either. Like, it... It doesn't make sense to release a pro version if, like, you're concerned about budget and development time and, you know, sales. I don't think... Because how many people bought a PlayStation 4 Pro? Did that sell as much as, like... I don't know. I understand the need for a PlayStation 4 Pro at the time. Yeah. But right now, I don't think games need that extra boost. No. There's, uh, I don't know of a game that's like, we can't put this on PlayStation because it's not, uh, yeah. because it's too powerful. We need all I, of Yeah, the, it's just... Like, what games are releasing for PC that are blowing PlayStation out of the water? I can't think of one. Yeah. We know that we have issues with Xbox with the Series S. Yeah. But that's but that, it. That's underpowered. Yeah, and that makes sense. I mean, yeah. Everything runs on PlayStation fine. Like, I don't know of anything that, like, constantly crashes or, like... The only thing I can think of is that now developers are kind of using the extra hardware as, a, like, a crutch? Like, maybe that's not the right word. They're using the extra hardware um, as a way to pick up the slack for their unoptimized games. Yes. Like, uh... Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Call of Duty is a great example. Gotham Knights was supposed to come out on PS4 and Xbox One, but they couldn't get the games optimized for those systems, so they had to use the extra power of the next-gen systems to actually get the game up and running. Yeah, they complain. I remember them complaining about the Series S yeah. and about last-gen consoles, but really the game's just made poorly. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why it doesn't run good on low-powered both, stuff. That game both that game could have fucking run on an Xbox One or a PS4 cuz like the open world of Gotham Knights boring as shit. Nothing in it. Gotham looks terrible. Yeah. Gotham looks small. It could have run on a PS4 or an Xbox One. You just didn't have you were just too lazy to get the game running yeah. on those systems. I load up Resident Evil 4 on so many different little tiny devices and it runs fucking great. Yeah. All of the time you run, you load up Call of Duty and it chugs every device that, yeah. I, that I run. All the fans kick up no matter what. So uh, that's what I, I I think it's crazy to 
think that there's a pro yeah. in, in our in our future. We just got the slim. The slim made sense. It yeah. made sense to have some sort of iteration of the PlayStation. But packing more power into it just doesn't feel necessary right now. Yeah. Okay. Also, there's a fucking uh, Nintendo Switch 2 coming. Oh, yeah. No, this is, a, this is for real now. So this is the big deal. We, we didn't talk about this last week? No. Okay. We talk about the Switch 2 every other week. But there was the... So we've been talking about how it's definitely coming out this year. Yeah. And now it's looking like next year. I'll just <laughs> skip to the update. Since publication, uh, VGC has heard from multiple sources who said Nintendo told developers its next console will now launch in Q1 2025. According to the sources, third-party game companies were recently briefed on an internal delay in Nintendo's next-gen launch timing from late 2024 to early the following year. One publisher source suggested the delay was so that Nintendo could prepare stronger first-party software for the console. It's possible that the next-gen Nintendo console will now will now follow a similar timeline to the Switch, which was released in March, but announced the previous year. Eurogamer has corroborated that the Switch 2 is set for a Q1 2025 release. Uh, Bloomberg has now corroborated uh, this oh, these news. these are all updates. Yeah, with its own source. Nintendo Co. is advising game publishers that its next-gen console generate, uh, next generation console uh, will be delayed until the early months of 2025. So basically... The the news and report is that it's delayed. Yeah. It's kind of, it's going to come. It was supposed to come this year. It was on track to come this year, but Nintendo said we need more first party games on it, so we're going to delay till next year. Yeah. So I think this news is what made me think that the Nintendo Direct uh, was going to be a full direct and then got right. pu- pushed down. I don't think that they were going to talk about a Switch Two or anything. I just think that. Uh, they had some games that they're now going to uh, trickle out. They're going to space everything out now yeah. because they have more room because the Switch 2 is delayed. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if they're all cooperating this, I think this makes sense. Nothing's official until Nintendo says it themselves. Yes. So um, this could move. This is a moving target. Yeah. Um, I saw some articles saying, uh, well, no, everything's saying Q1 2025. I don't think that means fiscal year because yeah. the switch came out at the tail end of the previous fiscal year. Yeah. So I think that they're probably going to do the same thing here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that said, I wanted to see a new, uh, the, the Nintendo switch is, is that's one that's in dire need yeah. of, of some more power. Mm-hmm. That's one that's it's two generations behind now. Yeah. Uh, it's technically the previous generation. Yeah. Which I think is dumb. I think it counts as the current generation, but um, we don't make the rules. <laughs> we don't make the rules. Only Wikipedia does. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know when we'll hear about this, mm-hmm. uh, but I mean, it, there's a lot of people cooperating this, so I, I'm willing to to believe it. What now? Uh, f- Laura Croft. That's it. This is what she looks like now. Uh, big news for followers of the Lara Croft unification the theory. Uh, Tomb Raider developer Crystal Dynamics has revealed a new piece of art for the character that may closely represent uh, what she looks like in the series' next game. This reveal was apparently been anticipated for years, as in 2021, Tomb Raider franchise director Will Krislaki, uh said that Crystal Dynamics envisioned a future for Tomb Raider unfolding after the established adventures of the original core design games and its own prequel trilogy were working to unify these timelines. Um, he said at the time, with no new Tomb Raider games since 2018, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it's been a long wait. Long enough for Tomb Raider fans to seize on the idea of a unified Laura as a big deal. As evidence, here's uh, the reaction from some of the members of the subreddit. So, unified meaning this is... Because like when they rebooted Tomb Raider, she didn't really look like she did in previous games. Correct. I noticed she wasn't as jagged. Correct. That was one thing, yes. <laughs> no, but uh, now we have like the turquoise yes. top and the and the sh- and the booty shorts yes it, it's it's basically taking the Lara croft from the reboot series the tomb raider reboot rise of the tomb raider shadow of the tomb raider and finally finally like making her classic Lara croft yeah so those the 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 reboot is also kind of a prequel like it like it takes place yeah. before those other ones yeah. did so now it's like we're caught up 
Yeah. Kind of. But it kind of also makes it seem like they're going to weave it into the original games okay. timeline in a way, like the ones that Core Design made. I, I was I was thinking this is now we're in the we're in the timeline of the original games yeah. now. And so we're actually at the reboot right. area. Yeah. The the whole thing with like the Tomb Raider reboots, like that trilogy, it's one of those things it's like the Marvel Spider Man game the movies you thought like the first one, oh, like it's a reboot, but it establishes the character of like who he is, like as we know and recognize him. Then all of a sudden, cut to two entries later, by the end of the third entry, oh, now he's actually the character you remember him from long ago. Yeah. Like, why did you waste like two extra <laughs> entries to get to this point? They should have ended Tomb Raider 2016. I think it was 2016. They should have ended that game where Laura returns to the island in a new game plus mode wearing an updated version of the classic suit where it's a less revealing tank top and like uh capri pants instead of shorts but no they didn't you had to wait two more games for that um but yeah they should do this with final fantasy they should re remake final fantasy 7 but split it up into three or four even yeah. different parts and the second one should be actually a prequel but also, also a retelling sequel. Yeah. sequel. Yes, exactly. Um, I will note that uh, a lot of people, I think, this is just what she looked like in Call of Duty when she came out in Call of Duty. Oh, yeah, she's in ago. Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah. so it's, that's, they just took that model. Like, oh, yeah, it's the new Lara Croft. I mean, they could have been like, hey, Call of Duty, if you want Tomb Raider, you got to use the one that we're going to have for the future game. Yeah. You know, just to be more up to date. Um, I will be, like, I'm excited for this game. The last three Tomb Raider games were excellent. Uh, I'm just cu curious because, like, now Tomb Raider is owned by Embracer Group, UG, and Amazon is publishing the game. Also, UG. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm scared. Is what yeah. I'm trying to say. I'm a scared boy. I mean, I haven't played. I played the uh, first reboot. Yeah. Game. Uh, and then nothing else. I I re because they were like super cheap on Steam, so I I bought. Right, I bought the reboot and Rise. Because I wanted to play, I wanted to play those again because I didn't really like Shadow all that much. Um, I like Tomb Raider, the Tomb Raider reboot. Like, I love that game. It's one of my favorite games. It's a great game. I will recommend that game to everybody. I can't tell you a single thing that happens in Rise of the Tomb Raider. I do not remember that game at all. I don't remember the remake. I remember, I remember the first one. I remember being excited for Rise of the Tomb Raider. I remember like certain things here and there, but like the story, the the setting. Uh, what you're doing in the game? Nothing. No, I don't, I don't remember. All that I remember is all. you get that you get a hook. Yeah, you get a hook that you use. Yeah. Um. All right. Last news. Uh, Sega's new Crazy Taxi game is AAA in scope. I don't believe this. Uh, I think it's I double A. That's what I think. <laughs> let me let me get the exact quote because it comes from somebody in Sega. Skull uh, and Bones is supposed to be a quadruple A game. Oh yes. Uh, Sega first announced it was making a long-awaited uh, new Crazy Taxi game in December. Now, a Japanese Times interview has shed more light on its scope and revealed it was being worked on uh, in part by Sega's relatively new Sapporo Studio, uh, which is founded in the capital of, of Hotokyo. Uh, it sounds like Sapporo Studio is only contributing to the game, however, as the company isn't currently developing any project independently. Uh, the studio has an R&D department that handles designing and programming games and a QA department in charge of quality control, Sega Sapporo studio boss uh, Takia Se uh, Segawa said. Recruitment in R&D progressing it as expected. Segawa. I know, it's a perfect name, it's right? It's a perfect name. Uh, but for QA, we received more applications than anticipated, so a second branch of Sapporo studio opened in 2023. Back in December, Sega said its new Crazy Taxi will offer innovative and fresh dri uh, style driving action, which will invoke a cheerful feeling of freedom mixed with a fusion of nature and city. Uh, Sega also announced a new ent entries in Golden Axe, Shinobi, and Streets of Rage. Um, where is the quote where it actually... Like, I read the quote. It does say, like, specifically triple A. Fine and page, AAA. Yeah. Uh, nope, not here. <laughs> they don't quote it. Oh, here we go. It's in the Japanese Times. This is, um, we're responsible for titles such as Fantasy Star Online 2 uh, and Hatsuyu, uh, Hatsune Miku uh, in cooperation with bases in Tokyo, Tokyo and overseas, Sagawa said. We're also participating in the development of AAA titles, including Crazy Taxi. Oh. I mean, we, 
when did they announce that they're doing uh six new games uh, from- at the game awards that yeah, was when okay. they had the the montage of crazy taxi streets of rage um jet grind radio jet grind radio shinobi you got you got to do it okay, otherwise I'm it's not I'm sorry yeah. shinobi yeah. yeah and also and crazy taxi yeah. uh so like and and they showed a highlight reel of all of them yeah and I don't think any of them look like AAA games. Yeah, no, Crazy Taxi is not a AAA game. It is a AA game at most. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Fucking 25 years ago. It was a, <laughs> it was a Dreamcast system seller. Yeah. So I can't imagine. I've talked about this already. I can't imagine a modern day Crazy Taxi game. It would ha- It would be like a simple game. It would be a smaller game. Yeah. I mean, I could see you doing like an open world thing. Like that makes sense. The original Crazy Taxi was an arcade game. So it was based It was on a timer. You had to complete everything within a time limit. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, and then the game was over. For modern age, you get rid of the time limit, unless like you're actually delivering, like sending somebody to their location and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Once you pick somebody up, the timer yeah. starts. You got. There, there are ways to do a modern crazy taxi. I just don't see a world where it's yeah, where it's yeah. AAA. You yeah. Know? Uh, but that being said, I'm excited for all of these games. Yes. I think I, I think they all have potential to be awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's just crazy to. Ah, oh, these people, uh, you know, the people who like work on the games, especially the boss, the high up bosses, yeah. always think they're making like fucking the the Citizen Kane of video games. Mm-hmm. So they have to say it's a triple A thing. Yeah. Uh, is it time for a the Reds of the week? Of the week? Of the week? Of the week? You did this. I did this because I think it goes with. Movie Matt K says film threads Madam 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 Web movie boring as hell had to bring out the DS. Oh, he's watching it's Morbius, Morbius on the DS <laughs> in theaters while watching Madam Web. Who is the Spider Man? That's Ezekiel. That's the bad guy. That's the bad guy. Fucking dumb. Oh my god. Yeah, exactly. Like I have to see I have to see what's going on with this weird ass movie. (laughs) Anyway. Uh that's it. Yeah. Uh let's now talk to you guys. Yes. Let's start with people who have comments over on last week's Wolfden Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com a slash Wolfden Podcast. All right. Where is everybody? Uh, we got last week. We got it's a me, Eric, <laughs> who says talked about Duck Game and didn't invite me on as a guest to talk about it. That's Eric, the mod, and ah, uh, he's a very big Duck Game fan. Well, what part of we pick a game at random do you not <laughs> understand? Fellas, please says I'm fine with yellow paint. This because last week's episode was all about yellow paint video yes. games to mark the things that you have to do. Uh, I'm fine with yellow paint. Typically, can't find where to go next unless it's obvious. Game design has become so good that sometimes the next route to take is covered in foliage or partly hidden. Uh, God of War or Jedi Survivor. I think what he means is. Uh, uh, Game design is like, you know, the whole, like, like what you do in the game. Yeah. Uh, he means like the level design, like the specific. Well, game design, I'm, game design is like level design. It, yeah. it, it, it's supposed to guide you to where to go or, mm-hmm. or make you do things. Uh, they mean, uh, the way that a game looks like yeah. games look so good. They're, they're, they're the, the, the. Why art, I, direction. art direction yeah. is so good that it, it is hard to tell because everything yeah. looks the same. Everything looks realistic. I'm also the type of guy who can't find ketchup in the door of the fridge at home. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm with you on that. Yeah. Uh, disco stew. <laughs> Wait, disco stew. Me. Me goobble. Me, me goobble? Says the best <laughs> example of subtle guidance are when the devs take advantage of lighting to show key points of interest. Also, when a cutscene finishes and the camera is fixed in a position as to guide the player onto the next area, no arrows or yellow paint required. Yeah, I like it when a cutscene ends and it just kind of like points you in the direction you gotta well, go. Well, like you don't realize there's some games where you don't realize the cutscene ended and yeah. you're like, oh, I have to move now. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times, uh, 
the best ones, the cutscene will end and the camera will like go yeah. behind the guy. And you're like, oh, now I got to take control of the yeah. character. There was, there's a couple of games where there's like a cutscene that's like the climax of the story. And they'll hold a, there's like, this is like a trope. You hold the yeah. gun up yeah. and it doesn't say anything, but you're supposed to shoot the gun. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Uh, Nameless Silent says the Taco Bell cinnamon twists are just fried pasta noodles. I was shocked when I read that. Pasta noodles? No. No. No, that's no. That that is definitely no. a corn crunch. Yeah, it's not a, a f- not a flour crunch. It's fucking. It's it's fucking just air, basically. Yeah. It's fried air. <laughs> it's it's fried nothing. Yeah. Um. 72107 says, uh, Hooray, the return of the backlog makes me almost nostalgic for my uni days listening to the Wolf Bros in the background at 3 a.m. to stay awake. We're back, baby. Yeah. Do your homework. <laughs> uh, all right. We're in the chat now. We're in both chats. How yeah. are you doing, everybody? How Somebody asked uh, the official unofficial tech podcast hello fellow podcast said hi wolf bros first time catching the podcast live i'm starting a podcast with my friend any tips on how to manage slash talk on how to manage slash talk about it's a general podcast so we talk about anything i don't know what the question (laughs) just talk about whatever you talk i mean you got to have a topic that's going to be interesting to other people yeah i mean it helps if it's interesting to you but it's also got to be interesting to other yeah people. also like you know i hope your podcasting partner is like you have good conversation with them because like if you don't have good banter or rapport then like that could lead to boring you're podcasts. just gonna be saying yeah. um a lot yeah and i mean like you know i think we have pretty good banter and rapport and i i stutter you know sometimes and we do say like just um, kind of so. how we talk yeah you just gotta <laughs> Be comfortable in your setting, like yeah. just just let the stuff come to you, and yeah, try to be more natural when you when you do your show. Yeah, it also helps. We've been doing this for a million years. Yeah, uh, I'm sure we weren't as natural when we started. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lander in the YouTube chat says, "You might have answered this before, but why not use AdBlock when you share your screen?" It's because. I don't use Adblock personally because uh, I make a living off of YouTube ads. So it feels weird to free boot off of yeah. other people, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but also, we are straight up reading other people's articles. Yeah. So uh, they get paid through ads. So if I'm going to straight up read their articles so that you don't have to click on it, I might as well show their ads to yeah. you, <laughs> you know? Uh,. Holy Lettuce says, did you guys see the Elden Ring DLC trailer drops tomorrow at 9 a.m.? It was announced today, I believe. I did not see that. I saw I saw the tweet for it. I didn't, like, go any further than that. I still have not played Elden Ring, and I probably yeah. won't with the DLC. Um, Tuscaza, I worked at a Taco Bell, and Cinnamon Twist are fried noodles. The, the uh, noodle Z- thing. Zizul used to work at a Taco Bell. They are indeed fried spiral noodles. Spiral noodles. Spiral noodle. But like, they don't have the same crunch no, as a yeah, noodle. I don't believe... Here's, here's my hang up, okay? People use the word noodle for a lot of different things. Okay. To us, noodle is pasta. Right. It's a pasta noodle. I feel like we're talking about a different noodle. Right. Because this ain't no fucking pasta noodle. Yeah. You're going to make me no. pissed off. I'm getting mad over here. Uh, I just... Uh, Quora. How does Taco Bell make the cinnamon twists? Uh, Taco Bell cinnamon twists are made by deep frying strips of dough and then coating them with cinnamon sugar mixture. To make them at home, you'll need to create a similar dough, cut it into strips, and then fry them until they are golden brown. After frying, toss the strips in a mixture of cinnamon and sugar to coat them. The, uh, this picture literally has a, a pasta <laughs> in, the, in the deep fryer. They're, they're too airy. There's yeah. a lot of air in it. Yeah. Unless, like... 
I mean, because, you know, we buy pasta from the box, and that's already hardened. Unless this right. is, like, the actual, like, fresh pasta that's still soft when, you, like, you make it at home. When you actually do the hard work. <laughs> look, at the, look at the pictures. These are... I know. These, these, these pictures are fucking me up. I'm scared. Is this what that looks like? It's just a box of noodles. It's just a box of a hard noodles. Now, the problem is I'm going to go on a deep dive of recipe websites. And every goddamn recipe website, recipe website <laughs> has to have like the person's entire life story. I'm going to I'm going to take some fucking olive oil I'm gonna mm -hmm. put it in a pan. I'm going to put a noodle in it and we'll see what happens. <laughs> And this is gonna make me do like this is gonna make me like go to Taco Bell and like buy these fucking. I'm I'm really mad <laughs> about this. All right, let's just keep talking to people because otherwise I'm gonna be here all night. No, I'm upset. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think olive oil is high heat. Yeah, what do I use? Canola oil? What is it? Uh, I mean, yeah, maybe for frying. Gotta be a deep fryer with. No, you can. Do you have a Dutch oven? I I do that every night. <laughs> <laughs> if you have like a What is a Dutch oven? A, like a like a Le Creuset or a cast iron oven. Like mom has it, it's the big red pot. Oh that she cooks no, pasta I don't in. Have okay. That. Get one of those. They're expensive, but like get one of those. You can deep fr you can fry things in them. Can I just put it in a pan? Can I just use a pan? Why do I need one of those? You need something that can because like you fry things at like very high heat. Like mm -hmm. you gotta boil the the oil. At like three hundred and something degrees, and you need like a pot that like can hold all that. Okay, I'm sure I got a pot that can do that. Yeah. Poor Zim. Zim gets fucking Dutch ovens a <laughs> lot. Zim likes to be under the blanket. Zim will. Zim runs away. Yeah. Uh, I am from the Netherlands, and I have never heard of a Dutch oven. That's when you fart and put the blanket over someone's head. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh. All right, I think we're. I think that's it. Okay, yeah. I'm just talking about cinnamon twist. <laughs> uh, that's it. Thanks. Wait, before we go, let me make sure there's no notifications. That's it. There's no notifications. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on twitchtv Wolfden or youtubecom Wolfden podcast. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on youtubecom Wolfden podcast, so you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well because we're also on audio podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, Audible.com. Anywhere and everywhere you get your audio podcast from, but no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. I'll be back on Thursday probably for a video, and also uh, I will stream. I don't know what I've been I've been doing uh, Mario Maker speed runs. I've been enjoying doing that. Uh, this week's video on YouTube will be about MU Deck. It is now on Android. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, well, in beta. Right. Thanks for being here, everybody. Go watch Miss Click. She just started. Uh, oh, and it's not her starting student screen. Wow, amazing. Uh, she's playing Helldivers. Go watch her. Uh, I'll see you later. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.